Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, we'll be having more fun with our maze form. So this is the second maze form that I bought, and I figured I'd actually make a few more videos of what you can do with like you know bio settings, things like that. Because now I've already migrated everything on my uh, first maze form, which now I don't really want to you know turn it off. So there will definitely be a video about like Proxmox clustering and stuff like that once I kind of start learning about it. Um, but in this video, we played around with the bio settings a little bit. Um, and we actually got Intel V Pro working, which is essentially is if you've ever used like iDRAC for like Dell, um, it's essentially you can use it to remote in, remote in um, to the machine to do more like physical hardware related features. So like powering it on, powering back off, getting the console for it, like a, you know, KVM type situation um, without needing to be physically there and having a monitor plugged in. Um, so it's actually pretty cool to be able to do it with this because um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, your machine might turn off because of a power outage and doesn't turn back on when the power comes on and you're not at home um, and things like that. So you can remotely power back power back on um, if, as long as your network's up. So um, there's a lot of cool things you can do with it, but I'll show you how you can configure it today um, and use Mesh Commander to access it and then do the things that you need to do. So let's get started. All right, so currently I have my maze form plugged into my video capture card, so that's why it says no signal right now. Um, but I'm gonna power back on, it's right over here, so I'm gonna power back on. And then you'll be slapping the delete button until it essentially comes up because we need to get into the BIOS here. Um, so it'll take a few seconds, but hopefully it shows up here. Um, and it will be really interesting to actually um, watch it through the video capture card actually um, and going through settings. So you get, your BIOS settings here, and I might move my camera, um, and I'm not entirely sure where it will be best. So um, let's put it in the upper right for now, um, but maybe upper left. So we'll we'll swap it as we kind of go through. Um, so the first thing that we would go do, everything I'm doing is keyboard command, so you might not be able to see it go because I don't have a mouse plugged in, but we'll hit set up here, and I already have everything configured. So actually, I'll I'll put it in my my uh myself at the bottom left because i think that now that I'm looking at it i think bottom left is going to be the best place um so essentially what we'll do here is um configure a few things so we'll want to um go down and i think hit advance we will then go to onboard devices on board devices and primary uh, display will set to HG. So um, there's a few settings here. I think it's auto by default, but we want to set it to HG here um, as your first thing. Um, and let's see if there was anything else on this. Um, we can go to SAPCIE port and then we will set all the stuff for ASPM to be disabled. So we disabled the PCIe 4 for SSD disabled um, and scroll down. You can see all the AS, ASPM stuff is also disabled in the advanced settings. Um, we can then go back and I think that's pretty much it for the configuration um, for onboarding stuff. So We'll go back to this and we'll go to M M E B X, um, and we will go configure, um, stuff. Um, so there will be the password. So enter current password. So this will be admin. If you haven't touched it, I've already changed the password. So my password isn't, isn't admin anymore. Um, and then you hit, okay. Um, so the one thing that I've read in a lot of articles, and I guess I didn't test it but there is actually a password complexity for this. So you have to have like a lowercase, uppercase, um, well, uh, an alpha number and a symbol, uh, I think is the, the actual pa password complexities. And if you fail that complexity, it'll give you an error, but not saying that you fail the complexity, but like your password doesn't match or something. So it's actually very confusing from what I've heard. Um, I just put in a password that ha ma meets the complexity, so it all worked. But if you run into an issue with that, test your password complexity um, because that'll probably be the first thing that will uh, be, uh, you know, the situation here. Okay, so we'll want to make sure Intel AMT is enabled. Then we'll go to the AM, 
uh, to configuration. So there's a few things in here that we'll want to go through. So let's start at the top. We'll make sure all the redirection stuff is enabled. So everything's enabled. So we'll get on that. Uh, user consent, um, we'll do user opt-in is equal to none. Um, I think this was set to either KVM or all when I first looked at it. Um, and then we can opt-in configurable from remote IT is enabled. Then we'll do the um, network setup. So you get your name. So I'm going to just name mine Proxmox2. Or hyphen MGMT for like management, asgard.local. Um, the shared dedicated FQDN is dedicated. Dynamic DNS update is also disabled here. Um, so we should be good on that. We'll hit back. Oh. Yep, okay. That was all good. Hit back again. Then we go to TCP IP settings. So we'll configure our uh, LAN. So most cases, for something like this, you never want it to be DHCP because if it grabs a different IP, you don't know what IP your management is on. So what I did was set it to disable, set an IP that's open on my network, so 116, set the subnet mask, set the default gateway, preferred DNS, and alternative DNS. So essentially all this is what you would configure for like a static IP for a machine. Um, so we should be all set here. And then we'll have to go back again and back again. Um, so that is essentially the network setup. Then you got your network access state um, over here. Um, so we want that to be active, network active. So set that to network active. Um, and then we don't need to do anything for the remote setup and configuration, I don't think, um, based off of what that was. Let's double check that here real quick. Nope, doesn't look like it. And I think that should essentially be it in regards to um, this configuration. So now that we got all the configurations set up, what we can do here is hit save and exit and hit OK on the configuration. Um, so this will now essentially reboot the machine and everything. But what we'll do here is now we need to configure the um, mesh commander on your Windows box, um, essentially. So what we'll do here, I'm with the keyboard over because this is a different keyboard. Um, we can go to Google search mesh commander. Um, and we will essentially install the commander with the Windows executable here. So we'll click on this. It should download over here. And then we'll hit Hit the button, hit next, accept the key and everything. We'll hit next for it and install. And this is a very small program, so not, not much going on here. Um, and then what we can do is hit launch mesh commander and you will get, you know, a interface that kind of looks back from like, you know, like 1990s ish, probably. Um, it's not really, you know, like, your, your day of with with all the you know cool features and everything looks uh, interesting but it actually works out works very well in this so what we'll do is add computer and we'll name this proxmox 2 management for the name the host name we'll just do the IP so 116 for the auth and security we will set digest TLS and then the password will be the password that we set for the machine. And then we will hit OK here. So you can see that we have some settings here. We can hit Connect. So this will connect. It will say that there's a self-signed cert, which we will accept here. And then you, you should start seeing things populate on the very left side over here, where it actually is um, giving you starting to give all the options. So you can see in here where there's a few things in here that will give you some information. Um, and what we can do is the thing that we'll most likely play with is the remote desktop stuff. So you can actually hit connect here and you can see that it will actually connect and ideally show up the, the page <laughs> um, that is there. Unless it's, unless there's nothing going on. Um, let me, I guess I, I realized I just unplugged my capture card. So um, 
let's take a look here real quick, see if anything actually pops up. No signal yet. Um, it might still be booting. Oh, it's still booting. Okay, okay, it's good. Um, so now you can see that there's a display over here. You can't really tell, but it, it's the normal Proxmox display. Um, and, and I wonder if it's just because it's really, really small um, in here. So, But you will be able to type things in and do things. And I'm sure there's a way to, to scale it. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if um, <laughs> I uh, scaling 100%. There, uh, there is a way I'm sure that will make it look a little bit better. Uh, I think it's because I have it plugged in and it's doing like 1080 um, or more on this on this display uh, that it looks it looks really bad. But you can now essentially do this. Um, but the other cool thing is you got you know power options. You can reset power cycle turn off. Um, so I can do like a uh, power down. So I can hit OK. It will power down. Um, so. I can see that the button, you can't see it, but I can see it. the button, the button isn't blue anymore. We can issue the power up command. So it will power back up. So performing action, I can see that the power button now is blue again, um, which makes it great because that's kind of what we wanted. Um, and hopefully we can hit connect and we can start seeing things pop up again as um, they appear. So waiting up to eight minutes for KVM related stuff. Oh, I probably should have unplugged the HDMI because I think that would have been a, a, a good test to to see if, if it actually comes up the way we're wanting it to. Oh, so now you can see the minis form. It pops up. So now you can see all the BIOS, the things that would pop up normally for it. Proxmox. Yeah, so so it's just the, the graphics here. No biggie. And then there's the login again. So I'll probably have to play around with and see, you know, how to get, you know, the text to look a little bit easier to read here. Um, but you essentially have full control with this management without needing to actually go down and plug in a monitor and uh, hit power supply settings if you don't need to. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.